able to stand in that church. I believe the church also, I believe that causes us to stand as we, uh, as we see the examples that they give us. So as we look into Psalm 62, beginning at verse 5. Psalm 62, beginning at verse 5. Heavenly Father, God, tonight we praise you and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your health and we thank you for your strength. And God, we thank you for those who are here tonight, God. And Father, we pray tonight, Jesus, Lord, that you'll just touch each and every one that's here, Lord, that you'll lift them up, Lord, strengthen them. And God, just let them feel the presence and the love of you tonight, Father. God, we pray for those who are not here because some may be sick, some because of the weather, Lord, but maybe the scourge or whatever, God. But we pray, God, that some way or somehow you will touch their lives. Amen, Father. And God, we pray, God, for your touch of lives are here tonight. God, I pray for the anointing, Lord, that will be tonight, Father, without you, Lord. We can do nothing, Father. Lord, we pray that you now, Lord, bless this message tonight. Lord, that you poured it in my heart tonight, Father. And God, we give you the praise of the Lord and the honor for it. And everybody says, Amen. The Bible tells in Psalm 62, verse 1, that the psalmist said, My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. Amen. So, church, I tell you, if we're going to wait upon God, we've got to expect God to move. And have a confidence in it that God will do. Amen. And church, I, I, many times you and I probably had to rely uh, to rely upon God and have confidence in God that, that He would bring things to pass. Yeah. How many times have God ever let you down? I don't think there's one here in the sanctuary, amen, that, that can say that God has let me down. He's never let me down and He'll never let you down. That's our confidence that we need to have in God. And David was a man that had confidence in God and he learned to wait upon him. The church, when we learn to wait upon God, I believe God will always go through. Now, he doesn't work on our time. That's why we mess up sometimes because we seem like we get give up and everything. But if we wait upon God, God will move in his own yeah. time. Yeah. And the Bible says in verse 6, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense and I shall not be moved. Now that sounds like to me he was trusting in God. Now church, when the, when the devil comes and when the storm comes and everything in our life happens, that in our life we shouldn't get worried, we shouldn't, uh, amen, lose doubt, we shouldn't get, uh, give up. We should just learn to wait upon the Lord and let him, amen, move in his own time. But church, sometimes we never get the answer of God because see, sometimes we allow the devil to move us. But David, so the psalmist said, I will, shall not, amen, be moved. And thank God, church, we, we, we can be like a tree that's planted by the waters. Glory to God. And when the storms come, we're not going to be moved. Now, today, this psalmist, David, had a, a secret, I believe, and I believe that we can do the same thing. Now, David was a man that he was up one day, down the next. He was uh, he would have joy one day and he was going to have sorrow the day. See, he was constantly going through battles and we go through battles. But yet the Bible says, I shall not be moved. Yeah. Church, we can't be moved upon circumstances. Yeah. We walk by faith. The church, when we walk by faith, we should never be moved by circumstances. And, and uh, as David said, I shall not be moved. Now the Bible tells us in verse 7, it says, If God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my salvation, the rock of my strength, and uh, my refuge is in God. Trust in the Lord at all times, ye people. Now, God, I believe he's telling us a secret here that we need to learn. How many know that we've got to trust in God? And the best way that we can learn to trust in God, church, is to learn like David did here. He said, he said, I trust in the Lord at all times. I pour my heart out of it. And that's a secret. I believe, church, when we pray, I believe that we are to learn, amen, to pour our heart out to God. Not be moved away from member circumstances. And church David, the, the psalmist worked there that he said, if I pour my heart out to him, and church, I believe that this is a secret that the psalmist yeah. had, that when he began to pray and begin yeah. to pray and begin to pray and begin to pray, he began to pour his heart out to God and he had a confidence. He said, God, you're my refuge, yeah. God, you're my fortress. 
God, you're my strength. You're my everything. And I believe he kept repeating, repeating that and began to have trust in God and confidence. And he said, now, God, I'm not going to be moved in this circumstance. And as we look through the, uh, the Bible church, we see the men of old. We see where Daniel, the Bible said Daniel prayed three times a day. And church, when he was even in, in the lions, in the, I, I would say in the, in the den of lions or, or the mouth of the lions, I believe he continued to pray and poured his heart out to God. And I believe God come down, like the Bible says, and shut the lion's mouth. Church, I, we've got power with God. We can say that song says, you're in sometimes, my soul is well. And church, we take, if you learn to pour your heart out to God and trust in God, because see, the Bible says that, that the, the, the fervent prayer of a righteous just man of that much. And when we learn when we're going through something, going through trials, just like David. I mean, David, he was lord in the deal of lions. And the church, he wasn't moved. He still trusted in God. And when the weak had to face the, the old lion, he, the Bible said he come in like a roaring lion, praise God. And that's all he's got. He just got a roar, amen. Because he liked to, like the old dog said, how a dog comes barking and yapping and everything. So most of the time, the dog, all he's got is just a bark. And, and the church, that's the same way the old devil is. We learn to pour our heart out to God because the more we pour our heart out to God and the more relationship we have with God we won't be moved when the devil comes yeah. against us because we got confidence and we know that we're standing on a solid foundation and that God has never let us down. Many times, church, I pour my heart out to God. That's the only thing I could do. That was the only way I had it. That was the only way out, church. And you've been there probably yourself. If God didn't move, you, I mean, he was just going to be the best, but God knew why. It's because you learned to pour your heart out on God. And that's what he said, I've learned to pour my heart out on him. See, your soul is well. And church, if you've got confidence in God, if you begin to pour your heart out. And Daniel poured his heart out if he was not moved. I know sometimes, church, when the devil comes at you and he'll make things bigger than what it is. But when he begins to make things bigger than what it is, that's when we know that God is about to move. And that's the last thing the devil tried to do is to try to use to lose courage, and try to get to give you to give up and not pray. But church, we learn to pray. And thank God, I believe we are a church that's praying and seeking God. I know we're going through things in church right now, but it hasn't stopped our praying. It hasn't stopped our fasting. And church, we're not going to stop praying. And we're not going to stop, amen, fasting. It's because we'll continue to pour our heart out. Because we're going to believe that the God is going to bring a revival. We're going to believe that God is going to save our, save our lost loved ones. We're going to believe that God is going to do miracles. And those gifts are in the church are going to be operated by. It's because we're learning to pour our heart out to God. And we're not being and move with the devil. I'll give them on the hand clap. We need to learn to pour our heart out to God and recognize it. He said, "My, I trust in God. Trust in God all the time. And the way you trust in God is to pray and learn to pour your heart out to God. This is what he says here now. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour your heart out before Him, for God is a refuge for us. So He's telling us. God is our refuge. Go to Him. He's our refuge. And while you're there in the refuge, in the place that, amen, that God is going to protect you, just keep pouring your heart out to Him because, church, He's not going to let you down. Like I said in the book of James, He said, the fervent prayer of a righteous man of belly punch. And, church, you need to, amen, look for something to happen. I said we need to look for something to happen. Because the Bible says if we pray in secret, and for every time that we need to get into a closet in the place of secret and begin to pour our heart out. Are you tired of the devil trying to destroy your family? Are you tired of the devil trying to destroy your marriage? Are you so tired of short of that, that the devil destroyed our nation and everything. Get into a closet somewhere to begin to pour your heart out to God. And I believe God will move up on that. And we'll see a change in our loved ones. We'll be to see a change in the marriage. We'll see a change in the church. We'll see a change in our nation. Because God said if it, it was praying in secret, God will bring it out in the open. Let's just keep pouring our heart out to God. Because I think he's a God that cares. So we need to understand this. And the Bible says, cast all your tears up on him, for he is a God that careth. I'll give him all the head clap. Yeah, he's a learn kids. And we need to learn that. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Now, 
Well, just, just because you think that you're living good, and just because you think you're, you're, you're doing things for God, and everything is going to be all right. Church, let me tell you something. When God opens the door for an opportunity, and we walk in that door for an opportunity, and we're doing something for God, you just don't think that the devil's going to say, hey, man, just stand back and let you do what you're going to do. And, that, and Paul and Silas, Bible said they were doing mighty things for God, and the Bible said that they were thrown into prison because they were doing a work for God. Just because you're doing a work for God, it doesn't mean that the devil's going to let you go. And the Bible said that they, that they were thrown in the back of the jail, and they had the chains upon them, and the old devil thought that they had Paul and Silas, but the Bible says, amen, that he, that he prayed. In other words, he poured his heart out to God. Now, church, let me tell you, you can be shackled by the things that the devil puts on us, but you can sit there and take it if you want to, but you begin to, amen, pray and pour your heart out to God, and the Bible says that they begin to pray, and church, let me tell you something. Don't you can first of all you can pray down to heaven because the Bible said they begin to pray first of all. Then they begin to praise God. I'm going to tell you, church, when we get into trouble, we need to start praying and pouring our heart out to God, and God will bring a joy and God will bring a peace, and He'll cause us to learn to rejoice and praise Him even in, in, in time that He it seems like the devil's got us down and we can't do nothing. And the Bible says that they begin to pray and begin to say, Praise God. The Bible said there was a point earthquake. I mean, I mean, the whole building begin to shake. The church, I believe, we begin to pour our heart out at the church. I believe we can get this whole building shaking, amen, with the glory and the power of God. And we can see mighty things happen. Amen. Because let me tell you, you begin to pour your heart out to God and have the confidence of God. Something will, I said, something will happen if we just start to pour our heart out. And the Bible said they begin to, they begin to praise Him as, as they were praying. And the Bible says that glory to God. Uh, that there was a great earthquake or a great shaking, and the doors were just opened up, uh, and they be, they were set free. Yes. Amen. I tell you, prayer will cause things to happen, Amen. church. Amen. 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 You can read the rest if you want to, but I just want to get to the high point there because I'm here to tell you, if you begin to pray and pour your heart out to God, things will happen. Don't you give up on your loved one. Don't you give up on your family. Don't forget, up, don't give up on things that you need. If you need a miracle, then never give up on it. If you need a move of God, never give up on it. You pour your heart out to Him and believe, pour glory to God, that God is going to move, and I believe He will move. Glory Amen. to God. The Bible tells us, in Isaiah chapter 38, Isaiah was a Hezekiah was a great man of God. Yes. Bible says he was. Uh, he sent a prophet to Isaiah. Uh, Hezekiah told Hezekiah to set his house in order. Now, church, let me tell you something. I believe that Hezekiah already had his house in order, but he was telling, in other words, keep his house in order. And the Bible said that he was the death was pronounced upon him. And the Bible says he turned his head to. Uh, toward the wall, and his face toward the wall, and he began to pour his heart out to God. I'm here to tell you, church, when you pour your heart out to God, I believe God will hear your prayer. And the Bible says he began to pour his heart out to God, and God sent the prophet back and told him, amen, tell him, I say, I am going to give him 15 more years, amen. Why? Because he learned how to pour his heart out, to learn to have constant trust in God. So if we look at the book of Isaiah, Chapter 38, just read chapter 38, and it will show you the glory of God, amen. As a kind, he, he got him answered from God because he learned to pour his heart out to God. Church, we've got to learn tonight when we need a move of God, we need to pour our heart out and have the compass. What the Bible says, we've got to have the compass. He said, my soul is from God. My expectation is from him. And he said, I shall not be moved. That sounds like a man in, in chapter 62 there, that a man that had confidence and trust in God, but he learned to pour his heart out to God. And church, that's what we've got to learn. Amen. When things happen and things are not, not going your way, and, and the Bible says that if you walk upright with him, see, we've got to walk upright with God. And if we're God's children to walk upright with him and please him, he said, I'll not withhold any good thing. Amen. I don't believe you can live like the devil, talk like the devil, and be like the devil. And I, hear we, I know we got a lot of people today that can live like 
like the devil, talk like the devil, and have facts that he didn't have, and think that, you know what, and think God would answer their prayer. God will not answer prayer with a, with a person like that, and because the Bible said those that walk upright with him, he'll not withhold any good thing. So we got to pour our heart, heart out to God, and believe that when we pour our heart out to God, that God is going to move. He's our represent, and, and, and he's our fortress, and he's everything that we need. And the Bible tells us in, in Psalms 34, verse 15. As we look into Psalms 34, verse 15, the Bible says, The eyes of the Lord. Yes. See, you've got to believe that God is looking down. How many believe that God is looking down right now? The Bible said that the eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous. So if we're walking upright with God, his eyes are constantly upon him. He's never leaving us for nor forsaking. That's what he's talking about. He said, my eyes are always upon you. I'm watching you. I'm there to bless you. I'm there to see that when you're going through a valley, that you're going to be able to make it through. So the Bible says there in verse, uh, in chapter 34, verse 15, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Well, that lets me know, church, that God is seeing and he's listening to us. So when we're going through things, let's learn, as the Bible says, Paul and Silas. I believe Paul and Silas knew that God's eyes were upon them. I believe that Daniel recognized and knew that God's eyes was upon Amen. them. And just like with, uh, his ears was upon them, he heard their cry, he heard their praises, and God is no respect of person, so he will bless us. And while we're believing and trusting God, believing that when you're a righteous person, that God's eyes are open, he's looking down upon you and his ears are always open to our cry. Can I hear an amen? amen. And the Bible tells us in verse 17, he said the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh to all them that are broken heart and saith and says such as it, 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 that be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. What a, what, what a, a promise that we can stand on tonight, church. Remember, David said, my confidence is in God. Yeah. Paul Silas said, my confidence and my assurance is in God. Hezekiah said, my confidence and assurance is in God. All the men of old, and, and we looked at, I believe we can say here tonight that we could, we could have a testimony tonight that God is always open, yeah. amen, his eyes on us, on the ears upon us, and eyes upon us, and he's always answered our prayer, and he's always come through. Church, we just gotta learn to pour our heart out to God and into our soul. And like that song says here, he sings all the time, My soul is well. Amen. Why? Because you've got the assurance and the trust in God that God is your refuge, He is your fortress, He's your high tower, He's your deliverer, He's your healer, He's everything to you that you need. You just got to learn, amen, to cry out to him and pour your heart out. And the Bible says he hears the famous cry, but he wants to be asked. He wants us to, us for, to look to him for our healthy cultures. When we begin to look to him and pour our heart out to him, we have humbled ourselves and said, I can't rely upon nothing else. I can't rely upon myself. God, I've got to rely upon you. You are my help. Can I hear an amen? Uh, give the Lord a hand down tonight, church. We just need to learn to pour our heart out, God. I believe we've got people here tonight that people pour their heart out. Because I'll tell you, I've got confidence in the, in the church for people praying. You know what? Sometimes we just need a stirring. Sometimes we need a reminder. Some, uh, I, see, when we pour, learn to pour our heart out, we're pouring our soul out. And church, God understands that and sees that. Because, see, the Bible says out of out out of our mouth. Amen. When we pray, our, our praise is coming out of our mouth, it's coming out of our heart, the two are about everything. And God that sees that we're sincere, and God, I believe if a sincere person is praying, God is going to touch that. Amen. Amen. Let's stand tonight, church. <laughs>